Hold up. Yo, what's going on guys? It is Foxy Do98 here and welcome back to a brand new video for you guys here on my channel. Today we are back with my F1 2016 career mode season 3 with Red Bull Racing. Now, hey, just wanted to quickly talk about here, we're actually going to see, first of all, you can see our engineer is coming, us and, coming up to us and he is telling us about the uh, recent upgrades that we made in which we increased the engine power and also the fuel efficiency on our car because I felt they were the two weakest parts so far on the Red Bull car. Uh, that we needed to work on, which was the straight line speed, and fuel-wise, the uh, Red Bull just seemed very, very thirsty. So I decided to put those upgrades in, which means that we probably won't have enough resource points to make any more upgrades uh, until the next race, so we probably won't make any in this race. In fact, I do not make an upgrade in this Grand Prix. Might as well say it now, but uh, anyway, we are here for round two of the Bahrain Grand Prix, one of my favourite circuits uh, to drive around on the game. I've always been really quick around here. Uh, so hopefully we can get a very strong result and hopefully dominate this Grand Prix as I've done in many occasions uh, when I've raced around this track. Very, I, I, I just do like this track. It's very, very good. So uh, hopefully we can do uh, quite well. But if you do enjoy the video, nonetheless, drop a like. That'd be absolutely awesome. Subscribe down the around here as well. Um, I did go and check back uh, episode one uh, in Australia and had a look at the response. And I believe it was something like uh, 42 uh, likes, I think it was, at the time I was looking. Uh, to two dislikes so obviously it's uh, I always want the best responses possible but it still seems that everyone is happy um, at the moment and uh, if you are a fan of my series and you miss the f and you aren't happy that I went to Mercedes I do apologize again but you know uh, I had to take matters with my own hand and at the end of the day some people have criticized me and I've said at the end of the day look the vote was tied I had to take the matters with my own hand if I went for Mercedes those that wanted Red Bull would criticise me. If I went to Red Bull like I have, the ones that want Mercedes are going to criticise. Like, I just can't balance it out properly. But nonetheless, I'm here at Red Bull and we're here for a season. And uh, yeah, we're going to get on with it. So into the practice sessions we go then. We need these sessions, of course, because we need to get on with our um, research and development. Uh, we passed the track acclimatisation with a full purple around the entire lap. Uh, the tyre wear test, we did quite well. Got two purples and two greens. And then on the uh, qualifying simulation run, we beat the target time that the team had set. Moving on into qualifying then, you can see Emma's going to give us the goals and she wants us to be third or higher and beat Daniel Ricciardo, same as in Australia. Into Q1 we go then, you can see we're coming around the final corner, we've got, I believe that is Sergio Perez, I want to say, in front of us, but he's too far ahead so he's not going to cause an issue. He might actually give us a little bit of a toe down the straight and as you can see, we come through and we do set the fastest lap, which eventually was beaten by Ricciardo and Lewis Hamilton, bringing us into P3 but the end of Q1. So, we're all right there. We're safely through into the next part of qualifying. Into Q2 we go then. And as you can see, coming around the final corner, Sergio Perez goes across and sets the fastest lap of the session so far. But we're going to go and smash Perez's fastest lap there. And we go quickest. And we actually go and beat Nico Rosberg by nearly eight tenths of a second. Uh, at least, uh, the AIs weren't very quick in Q2. Um, but anyway, as you can see, down into the final corner here on Q3 now. We're breaking nice and hard. Daniel Ricciardo currently is the fastest man on the circuit and has, has gone pole position provisionally at the moment. But we stop Ricciardo from going on the front row of the grid. And uh, we overtake him. And we do get pole position by two tenths of a second over Lewis Hamilton. Beating Daniel Ricciardo from Raikkonen, Rosberg, Vettel, Bottas, Massa, Button. And I think that was Gutierrez there. So uh, a very, very strong qualifying indeed. Our first pole position... Uh, of the season but of course again if people start people when you're on like oh yeah you're not mate this isn't a challenge for you remember guys this is a track that I have never been weak at this is my strongest circuit I probably think on the whole calendar so I'm expected to do well around here but anyway all the resource points come stacking in and we're going to be closing that gap between me and Ricardo in the driver rivalry after he smashed us in Australia and we increased our driver position after we remember we were in the red uh, in the uh, previous Grand Prix in Australia Looking at the session goals then from the team, they're going to come up on your screens right now. There they are. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the race for the Bahrain Grand Prix. The curtain rises once more then on the desert stage of Sakir as the players take their places for the opening act. Will they enthrall us like they did in 2014 with that titanic battle between Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton? Well, we'll find out shortly as we get underway here in Bahrain. Formula One returns to the desert today on this exceptional 3.36 mile circuit. 15 corners provide plenty of overtaking opportunities and two DRS zones will help with that as well. It could be a strategic race this one with Sakir notorious for eating up the rear tyres. Watch out for drivers managing their rubber at some point during the Grand Prix. 
Bahrain has showed us many times in the past, though, Anthony Davidson, that a good strategy will only take you so far. Beyond that, you need good racecraft and you need good consistency. And a little bit of luck, too, I'd say. This is one of those circuits where the safety car always seems to come out just at the right time to condense the fuel together and mix up the cars on different strategies. It's hard on brakes, it's tough on fuel, and the main overtaking opportunity is down into turn one, where it's easy to outbreak your opponent and potentially have a bit of argy-bargy as well. OK, remember to protect the inside on the run down to turn one. Make yourself as wide as possible, robust but fair. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. It's Red Bull in pole position then, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Raikkonen, Nico Rosberg, and Vettel, Bottas, Massa, Button, and Sergio Perez, Kvyat, Alonso, Nico Hülkenberg, and Sainz, Grosjean, Gutierrez, Felipe Nasa, and Jolien Palmer, Verlein, and Ericsson. Rio Harianto and Kevin Magnussen rounds off the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. And then guys, as you can see, we are here for the Bahrain Grand Prix on the grid. And we're going to be doing the exact same strategy as we did in Australia. We're going to be pitting at the end of lap 5 and going on to the Yellow Mark, Super, uh, Yellow Mark Soft Tire sorry, uh, to the end of the race. And as you can see, very cloudy conditions here in Bahrain. Not... Um, completely uh, pitch black at night uh, as it normally is because it's very very cloudy and overcast here uh, so it kind of looks like a dryish day but anyway as you can see we are now on the grid here for the Bahrain Grand Prix we've got four now five red lights here and it is come on where these lights there they are out they go and we are underway here and it's a good start from us but it's a very good start from Lewis Hamilton with that Mercedes car a lot of traction there Hamilton right alongside us there we're going to give him the inside line going into turn one will Lewis Hamilton make the move he doesn't actually he actually sticks back and we're going to continue to lead in this Bahrain Grand Prix but everyone is tripping over each other further back and uh, we've already built ourselves a nice comfortable margin to start off this Grand Prix exactly what I wanted a clean start and uh, I knew that the cars in behind me would be a threat, but if I managed to have that some sort of gap, the slipstream wouldn't be as effective, and now I've got the opportunity to pull away, but even though I've still got this two second gap already, I've got to pull away, and I've got to maintain my speed, otherwise the Mercedes cars, when they're in the slipstream of this Red Bull, they're going to blast past me with their straight line speed, so I need to keep pushing, so as you can see, down into turn 10, going very wide there, losing out, outbreaking myself just a little bit there. Um, but luckily, nothing too badly there. But look at that on the um, leaderboards. You can see that Daniel Ricciardo in third place is on the soft tyres. So he's going on an alternate strategy to myself, which is crucial. After I saw that Ricciardo was on the soft tyres, I had no idea that he was. Now that I've seen that, as I go super wide here and uh, exceeding the track limits there by a long, long way. After I saw that, I, need, I, I knew that I actually have to give it my absolute best now. I'm absolutely gun for it. Because now that I've realised that Ricardo's on the soft tyres, he's going to be going a lot longer on his first stint. Which means that he will then be on the red mark super soft tyres, expectedly, to the end of the race. Which means that he is going to be a lot quicker at the end of the race. So I need to get the gap up now. But anyway, that is it for the end of the first lap. A nice clean first lap there from myself. And we're going to get another replay off the start. So Lewis Hamilton gets a much better start than myself. Off the, uh, off the line, and even towards the, um, even in the secondary phase, he was still quicker than myself here. Breaking down into turn one, I give Lewis Hamilton the outside line, but there's going three abreast there. My teammate Hamilton and Rosberg all battling for position, going from turn two and turn three, uh, which gives me just a nice clear run, as you can see, everyone scrapping behind me, making the run up to turn four now. You can see that it's all nice and clear. My teammate Ricardo making an inroads on Nico Rosberg, seeing if he can get himself in front here. Moving through this S section here now, you can see that we are, we're just comfortably in front now. We don't need to worry about the others behind us. We just need to worry about getting the job done and just dominating in this Red Bull car like they did back in uh, 2010 towards 2013. That little period when they dominated, especially in 2013 with Vettel winning the final nine races of the season. Moving on then, you can see that's when we locked up going into turn 10 there, losing a bit of time. But you can already see the nice comfortable gap that I have built myself. And now I can work with this, which is absolutely crucial. Now that I've got this 2.2 second gap, 
if Rosberg starts to close in a little bit and gains about like a couple of tenths, that means I can push harder and gain those tenths back. So I've got a nice gap that I can work with and you can see this is where we went super wide there and exceeded the track limits as we come now down the back straight here comfortably in front of Rosberg with my teammate Ricardo in third place, Lewis Hamilton in fourth. So it's a Red Bull Mercedes fight uh, at this moment in time. And uh, we just need to keep on working with what we've got around the final corner we come. And uh, that is it for the end of the first lap. A nice comfortable lap and uh, everything going our way at the moment. No problems in the Red Bull car, but we've got some time to go. Moving all the all the way to lap four of the Grand Prix, uh, Nico Rosberg is starting to close the gap, into, uh, gap towards us. He's uh, closing it down. It's about three seconds. I did extend it to about four seconds. Um, but Marcus Ericsson is out of this race, unfortunately, for you Marcus Ericsson fans. He is no longer participating in my race as he has a spectacular engine blow up. And uh, he parks the car in a very awkward place there, right on the middle of the circuit there. So uh, pretty silly stuff from Ericsson. But we're going to be coming into the pits at the end of this lap. But hang on a second. The safety car is out. We will no longer be uh, doing what we thought. The safety car comes out. Luckily for us, the safety car has come out on the pit straight. So we've actually overtaken it. So we don't have to stay behind the safety car. We can stick to a positive delta. But Nico Rosberg, in the process of this, has closed right up to us. But that has completely thrown a spanner in the works here. And we have now got some thinking to do because this safety car has come out at the exact time that my pit stop was ready. However, because I had such a big margin, a lot of the drivers came, could have come in straight away and not and pitted a lap earlier than I did. So it's probably going to be quite problematic. But we're coming into the pits now and we're going to be going onto the yellow mark soft tyres, as you can see right there. And we need to see where we feed out now. And as you saw there, actually, Daniel Ricciardo is going onto the medium compound tyres. So... He wasn't doing the strategy I thought he was going to do. I thought he was going to go soft, super soft. He's actually going soft, medium. Uh, and now everyone coming out of the pits, everyone's actually gone onto the medium compound tyres. I am the only driver, as we come up just behind Vettel here, I'm the only driver that's come out on the yellow mark soft tyres, which means I'm going to be quicker. But my engineer said, do you want to come in on the mediums or do you want to stick with the softs? I stuck with the soft compound tyres. However, these soft tyres... Hopefully they can make it to the end of the race because everyone's gone on medium. So I've gone on a completely different strategy. Now the safety car is coming at the end of this lap. I was actually looking at my phone at the point because I was kind of getting bored of me running around with the safety car. So I went completely off the circuit and wasn't paying attention to my actual game. Shows how much I take this career mode seriously. I was too busy playing on my phone whilst the safety car was out because I was bored. Uh, so uh, anyway, as you can see, safety car coming at the end of this lap. We're going to tuck him right behind Sebastian Vettel in his Scarlet Ferrari. I absolutely love the Ferrari car, man. It's so sexy. Uh, but as you can see then, round the final corner. I don't know who's leading this race, actually. I can't see from here. But anyway, we're going to be getting things underway. Round the final corner we go now. And uh, we're going to be looking to attack Sebastian Vettel along the back straight, on the pit straight here. It is green flags. We are racing again here. And Vettel has jumped us in the pit stop, remember. He was behind us, and now he's in front of us. So we're out of position here. And as you can see, coming down into turn one we go. And we've overtaken Vettel. And we're going to dive bomb down Kevin Magnussen. And we've moved up two places. Next up is the other Renault of Jolian Palmer. Then we've got to attack Lewis. Hamilton who's also jumped us in the pit stop so everything has gone completely crazy right now here as we see all the cars flashing here there's my teammate Ricardo all at the back of the field here and for some reason the camera decided to stay here for about 10 seconds and as you can see we're back on board myself I actually went around the inside of the Renault into turn four it didn't show it because of the camera angle that it was showing but as you can see I'm all over the rear of Lewis Hamilton here and I'm gonna make a dive and remember guys I am on a faster compound of tires so I should be getting further up the field. I need to build a gap in case these tyres do wear out near the end of the race. So as you can see now, we're closing up to the house of Gutierrez here. Down the inside, into turn 10 we go. And we get past Gutierrez there nice and comfortably. And uh, as you can see, Carlos Sainz is leading this race. And he's got a gap forming at the moment. Hulkenberg is in second. Gafiat is in third. Myself is now up into fourth place. With Gutierrez, the McLaren of Alonso, and then Lewis Hamilton. So hopefully... The uh, Gutierrez and Alonso can keep Hamilton behind for a little bit longer and give me a chance to uh, get away. As you can see here, we're going to be making a move around the inside of Danny Gafiat here. Losing the back end of the car there and going wide onto the curbing here. But as we come down this long back straight, Gafiat is actually in the slipstream. He's going to have a go at us, Gafiat. He's going to be ballsy here. But unfortunately, there's just not enough straight left for Gafiat to make a move on us. And uh, Danny has to sit back for a bit more longer. And uh, my focus is now on Nico Hulkenberg. As we come down the pit straight here, we're into the rich fuel mixture. We go to the inside line for turn one here. Hulkenberg trying to give it a fight. But luckily, we managed to do get past. He does duck into the slipstream here. Thinking of a potential move, but uh, it's not going to work for him. Hulkenberg has to sit back and wait for another opportunity. 
And in the lead is Carlos Sainz in the Toro Rosso. And he's got quite a comfortable gap, actually. However, he is on very old soft tyres. And we are on brand spanking new set of soft tyres. So that gap is going to come down quite considerably. And we need to work on getting it down. So as you can see then, coming through this uh, section here, we're going to probably, I think we show the entire lap here as we look to close down on Carlos Sainz and hopefully slipstream him and uh, take him over at some point. I'm just checking to see Hamilton is still stuck behind Gutierrez and Alonso. So he's not making much progress. And uh, as we go wide here into turn 10 again, as we still try and hunt down the uh, Toro Rosso or the sister team, really, of Red Bull of uh, Carlos Sainz. So hopefully, you know, the uh, Red Bull team uh, will, uh, you know, just uh, quickly go over to Toro Rosso and say, hey, can you uh, can you um, not fight Tom off and just let him through? That'd be quite nice. Um, probably not, though. I reckon he's going to uh, fight me as much as he can here. Uh, but as you can see, you can you can already tell how quickly we are closing in onto Carlos Sainz, of course, with our fresh tyres. And we're also in a much faster car. You can see that we're now actually close enough to even attack Carlos Sainz with the slipstream. But once again here, you can see that I'm actually wildly going out. Once again, I was checking my phone. Sorry about that. Um, so uh, I literally down into the final corner. We outbreak Sainz completely. Now we've got a perfect run on Carlos Sainz here. We are down the pit straight here. Moving over to the inside line once again, you can see we just blast past Carlos Sainz. There's unfortunately nothing that he can do about it. And we are going to be taking the lead of the Bahrain Grand Prix once again down into turn one we go. And that is Sainz dispatched with you on lap nine with Hamilton now up into third. But he's a long way back, luckily. The traffic has held them up, which is perfect. And that's exactly what I needed. So now back down into turn four we go and uh, we are comfortably in front of Carlos Sainz in the uh, Toro Rosso there. Nicely done from us and uh, fastest first sector as well, just to uh, add insult to uh, everyone that's trying to close me down because I'm on a set, I'm on the faster tyre compound basically. I've made the strategy call perfect uh, in this race with Carlos Sainz still there, still looking to try and have a run at us, but you can see now as we come towards turn 10 here, um, we are now getting further in front and uh, this time we didn't go wide, but overall then, we now just need to control ourselves. But as you can see here, we're now on to lap 14, the final lap of the Grand Prix. Uh, luckily, Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel, uh, they started closing the gap down uh, on me in the final few laps. Um, but however, I built such a big margin up, I made the perfect strategy call. The safety car threw everything over on its head. But we come through, and that's back-to-back -back wins. That's two out of two for the start of this season with the Red Bull car. Red Bull are treating me quite nicely because I didn't get back-to-back -back wins with Mercedes until Hungary. But this time, we've started this season off on fire at the moment. And uh, we come through and we take the win. Christian Horner is absolutely over the moon there. And that's back-to-back -back wins for us here with our Red Bull car celebrating there. Overall, the Bahrain Grand Prix, um, basically, it was just an utter domination uh, in this Grand Prix. It's a track I absolutely, like I said at the start of the video, I absolutely love driving around it. I really am comfortable. I enjoy the track. The track suits me just so well. Uh, so at the start of the race, I was able to pull away thanks to everyone having a battle into turn one. And I was able to maintain the gap. The safety car kind of, kind of brought the entertainment back into it as I had to fight my way through the field to get back up to the top. And I did make the perfect call as well. My engineer said, do you want to go into the mediums? And I said, no, the soft tyres will make it to the end of the race, especially with a lap extra under the safety car. And they did. And uh, Hamilton and Vettel weren't able to catch me in time. They did start closing me down in the final lap. I did have about a 6.2 second gap. It came down to about 4.6 seconds. But overall, unlike Australia, where we had a lot of defending to do, it was comfortable here in Bahrain. Unfortunately, my teammate Daniel Ricciardo actually only finished down in 8th place. So not a good result there for Ricciardo, my teammate. And uh, Kimi Raikkonen finishing all the way down in 21st. So something's gone wrong with uh, Kimi Raikkonen, unfortunately, for him. And it's not going to be a happy day for the Iceman at all. Um, but guys... If you have enjoyed today's video, don't forget to drop a like on it. In the driver's standings, you can see that we have scored maximum points, just like Nico Rosberg did at the start of the season in real life. Uh, we've got 50 points. Lewis Hamilton is now in second in the standings, uh, with Rosberg, I believe, in third, and Ricardo in fourth in the driver's standings. I just want to double-check that, actually, if I scroll back up again. Uh, come on. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is, Ricardo. Actually, no, Ricardo's dropped down to fifth. Wow. Uh, in the constructor standings, then, we continue to lead the constructor's uh, standings, but Mercedes, with a strong race today, have actually closed that gap down to 17 points. But that's going to be it for the Bahrain Grand Prix. We do not make any upgrades. So, in the uh, next race in China, which is my weakest circuit, I think, not my weakest, but one of my weakest, so China will be a challenging track for us. Um, 
So uh, hopefully that will uh, provide some more action uh, with a track that I'm not actually as strong at. Uh, we will not be making any upgrades. So of course we did make two, which was the engine and the fuel efficiency in this race. In the next race, we're not going to be making any at all. So that is it, guys. And the team are telling us that we're doing really well because of course we're in the purple. Uh, until then, guys, I will see you for another video uh, very, very soon. So uh, yeah, take care. Peace. Peace.